Good morning and welcome to St Mary's. It's lovely that you've joined us online for this service and if this is your first time with us an especially warm welcome and if you're a regular we're delighted that you're here. Now this morning it's Remembrance Sunday and so our service is going to be a little different to usual. We're going to continue with our teaching series of Faith That Works and this week looking at what the Bible has to say about how faith in God works to help us de-escalate conflict and to be peacemakers. But our service will also reflect the theme of remembrance and at 11am we'll mark this with a two minute silence, remembering the contribution of British and Commonwealth military and civilian servicemen and women in the two world wars and later conflicts. It's an opportunity to say thank you for the freedom given us by the lives of those who've died, to acknowledge friends or relatives lost or afflicted, and to ask God's forgiveness for a world in which war and conflict still dominates. So shall we begin uh, with prayer uh, and some reading from the Bible. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Almighty God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
keep at a bay Love is the light scaring darkness away I'm so in love with you Here in the UK, it is Remembrance Sunday, uh, when our nation remembers the contribution of servicemen and women who in two world wars and later conflicts gave their lives for the freedom we now have today. On it, we're reminded that we live in a world of conflict, past, present and future. And so this morning, as we continue our journey through James's challenging and practical New Testament letter, we're going to concentrate on just one verse to help us see how faith works to de-escalate conflict, or in other words, James calls his readers to be peacemakers. I wonder if in recent years there's ever been a more pressing time to reflect on this. Anger, distrust, resentment simmer away in society for all manner of reason, be they economic, political, racial. Feelings being heightened by the unfairness of this pandemic and the looming uncertainties of Brexit. And all of this before even thinking about conflict nearer to home in our neighbourhoods, down our streets, amongst families. There is the potential for conflict in every human relationship. So this is a really important topic to study. My hunch is that very few are ever given lessons on how to de-escalate conflict, 
I don't think it's on the national curriculum. So thank God for the wisdom of the Bible and our passage this morning. So we're going to continue reading James's letter, James chapter 3, at verse 18. And we're going to put it in a wider context. So we're going to begin at verse 13. And it says this. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbour bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. First things first, what's a peacemaker? The New Living Translation translates verse 18 as those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness, or, or good things. Whatever planting seeds of peace means, these are surely important skills to learn because we know that we all experience conflict with other people, probably more often than we'd like to admit, because at the simple level we're all different and we like and dislike different things. James here is simply reflecting Jesus' teaching in his Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 verse 9, that says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. So this brings our topic into even sharper focus for the Christian. The proof that you're really a child of God, that you're really born again, is that you are a peacemaker, not a conflict maker, but a peacemaker. So before we get into the Bible's teaching about being a peacemaker and how to go about de-escalating conflict, here are two things that peacemaking is not. First, peacemaking is not avoiding. And secondly, peacemaking is not appeasing. Avoiding just means you don't rock the boat. You sweep things under the carpet, hoping that they're gonna go away. We know this doesn't work. This isn't peacemaking, it's cowardice, and it won't help you or the situation. It certainly won't help you grow in your relationship with Christ. Similarly, appeasing means you give in to the other person. It's peace at any price, but again, it's not peacemaking. Jesus didn't run away from legitimate conflict. He would face it head on working at how to resolve the situation and then trying to restore the relationship. So what follows are some principles to help de-escalate a conflict or resolve a tense situation, and they're drawn from biblical wisdom. So the first one is this, give a gentle response. When you're confronted with a tense situation, you have a choice. You can respond in kind, or you can pour oil on the situation to calm things down. The Bible is full of good advice about how to respond when it comes to de-escalating conflict. Here are a few examples. Proverbs 15.1 A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Or Ecclesiastes 9.17 The quiet words of the wise are more to be heeded than the shouting of a ruler among fools. Or how about in Proverbs 29.11 a fool gives full vent to anger, but the wise quietly holds it back. And finally, Proverbs 15 verse 18, a hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. Second principle, as we heard last week, we are wise if we first listen and try to understand the situation before we rush in with our own views. So for example, James 1 verse 19 teaches, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Or Proverbs 13 verse 10 from the Message Translation. Arrogant know-it-alls stir up discord, but wise men and women listen to each other's counsel. And again from this translation, the importance of listening and understanding the situation before seeking to be understood. So Proverbs 18 verse 13. Answering before listening is both stupid and rude. The Bible's pretty clear then. Third principle. We're to ask God 
for his wisdom and understanding for why there is a conflict before trying to apply our own natural and earthly wisdom, which is often coloured by envy and selfish ambition. James discusses the relative merits of human and godly wisdom, and he concludes in James 3 verse 17 that the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. So again, uh, we are to ask for God's wisdom. Fourthly, try to see the other person's perspective before jumping in to fix things and come to the situation with a sober and honest understanding of yourself. Jesus memorably taught about the folly of having a wrong perspective in his parable parable about only seeing a speck of sawdust in someone else's eye when all the time we have a plank in our own eye. So with this in mind, I want to read from Philippians 2 verses 4 to 5. It reminds us that each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. And the psalmist encourage us all in his prayer in Psalm 139. It says this, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Fifthly, and again as we were learning last week, recognise that words are powerful and so we need to choose how we use them carefully. So again in Proverbs, Chapter 12, verse 18, we're reminded that the words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. And more generally, in Ephesians 4, verse 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So, we've had five principles drawn from biblical wisdom to help de-escalate conflict. Now, in closing, we're reminded of the supreme example of a peacemaker. That's in the life of Jesus, who is described as the Prince of Peace. The Bible teaches that it is because of man's sinful, his selfish state, that we are now enemies with God, and as a result, we're in conflict with him and with one another. Our most urgent need is for a deep and lasting change, a new heart that comes only through the forgiveness of our sin. The good news is that this is possible for each and every person, not because of anything that we can achieve ourselves, but because of Christ's sacrifice, his death on a cross, that first Easter. It's because of Christ's death that we can be restored to a relationship of peace with God and with one another. And so, on this Remembrance Sunday, let's take a moment to pause, to reflect, and commit ourselves to work and to pray for our world to be peace-filled, recognising that everlasting peace is only possible through coming to know and acknowledge Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, as Lord of our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we've had this morning to look again into the Bible and to see the wisdom that's contained within it. Lord God, help us be those who genuinely commit to being peacemakers. Father, give us the wisdom we need. Father, we recognise this is not easy, but Lord God, in your strength, in your empowering, we can be courageous and we can take these steps to be those who sow seeds of peace. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
We do hope you've enjoyed your time this morning and we look forward to being able to welcome you again. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about what happens at St Mary's, please do join us for more online services. And you could take a moment just to fill out one of our Get Connected cards. Following on from this service, there will be a gathering on Zoom to connect and meet with others and to reflect on our topic this morning. So once the service is finished, please make yourself a coffee and then join with others online. The connection details, as usual, will be displayed at the end of the service. If you're interested in meeting with others in a small group and growing in your faith, Connect Groups offer a great opportunity to do this. Uh, and so if that's something you're interested in, please do get in contact with us. And if you'd like to explore more the claims of the Christian faith, uh, Alpha is a great place to do that. So again, uh, if you'd like to find out more about our next course or have any questions about it, uh, please get in contact or email alpha at stmarysperly.org.uk. But now, let me close with a blessing for this Remembrance Sunday. God, grant the living grace to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Oh